Hey guys, I'm Dolphin. Today I'm back with some more stat analysis. Yes, indeed, it is finally time to dive into Norska to take a look at the faction as a whole, take a look at each unit individually, look at their stats, and I'll kind of give you guys my anecdotal experience of what I've learned kind of playing them over the last few days, uh, the last week or so, I guess. Um, Norska is definitely a pretty good faction. They do have some bad matchups and some good matchups, so they definitely have a lot of good tools. Uh, overall, as a faction, uh, this is true even in campaign, they're very much a faction focused around taking down big monsters. So lots of anti-large, AP, and uh, different tools for doing so. They also have plenty of uh, tools for dealing with infantry, so we'll go through all of those. But uh, let's get straight to it. Uh, now, the first thing to note is all the, the army-wide ability for Norskin units. All units have some version of this Rage ability. So you can see it has three stages. They need to be in melee uh, to activate the successive stages, and they gain leadership, then physical resistance, and finally a bit of melee attack as well. Berserkers have an upgraded version of this rule that eventually gives in Rage and more buffs at the later stages. Um, but yeah. Just something to be aware of. That's kind of the army-wide ability for Norska. They very much like getting into melee combat and mixing it up. In terms of their Lord choices, you only have three Lord choices as of the recording of this video. I am hoping that CA decides <clears throat> to add a couple more legendary Lords or at least generic Lord choices for Norska later on, to, later on down the line. But as of recording this, there's, there's only these three. The Marauder Chieftain and Wolfric the Wanderer. Wolfric the Wanderer is kind of the legendary version. Both have the same mount selection. Marauder Chieftain has Fight or Die, which is the uh, leadership buff for the Norskins. It also gives melee attack rather than melee defense, like many others. Uh, Standard Ground, for example, gives melee defense rather than melee attack. So, uh, similar ability, but a different focus. He has Foe Seeker as well in terms of items, Potion of Foolhardiness, and the Axe of Comrack, or Cormac, which gives him fire damage and uh, a constant fire damage buff which can actually be very nice in certain matchups especially against somebody like the vampires that constant fire damage can definitely be useful against regenerating targets if his leadership goes below 50 percent it will get disabled but especially if he's up on a mammoth he's gonna it's gonna be hard to do that so i definitely like this item in certain matchups and makes the marauder chieftain kind of a nice pick uh, moving on to Wolfric himself, of course, you guys have seen plenty of Wolfric and will continue to see plenty of him. He's a very good Lord choice. Now that Sea Fang is aimable, that makes a huge difference. It applies Frostbite and does a really nice amount of damage, especially to unarmored units, but it'll even do some damage to armored units. And uh, yeah, you get three charges, 90 second cooldown, very strong ability. He also has Fight or Die and the Hunter of Champions. This is a single target debuff. You can only target a Lord or Hero, but it's a nasty debuff at 48% speed, 30 armor, and 46 melee attack. So if we compare that to El Seif, which is the other kind of massive single target character buff available to the old Red Duke, we can kind of compare the two abilities. So both 48% speed and in the area of 40 melee attack. Uh, yeah, 46, or sorry, melee defense, 46 and 45. And uh, in the Red Dukes takes down physical resistance rather than armor. So uh, very similar abilities with similar results it makes Wolfric a very strong character. The fact that it takes down armor is very important because he doesn't have the greatest AP values unless you put him on a mammoth, obviously. That changes that. But uh, the Sword of Torgald, his single item, gives plus 25, 75% uh, non-armor piercing damage. So uh, obviously if he's like on a horse, for example, he has 320 non-AP increased by 75%, which is quite a substantial buff. You can lower the armor with the Hunter of Champions, and as you can see uh, later on, as you guys will see rather, uh, the Norskins have a lot of way of a lot of different ways of lowering your armor, so you can get some really good synergies out of this. And the Wolfric's lack of AP honestly isn't the biggest issue. Somebody with great AP though is Throg. Now Throg is the Troll King and comes with many of the benefits of being a troll. Regeneration obviously makes him weak to fire but he does regenerate hit points. He's got armor piercing, anti-large, also applies frostbite. Only 55 armor but he does have 15% physical resistance. He also has several abilities here, Foe Seeker of course and Fight or Die. He also has Copious Vomit which is a 3 charge breath attack, does pretty good armor piercing damage from what I've seen, good against clumps of armored infantry. 
or even cavalry uh, you could probably get some good work there as well uh, winter tooth crown is an area of effect unbreakable effect that's his unique item a uh, very strong uh, norskins have okay leadership they're not amazing but they're not great either so it can definitely help to have that winter tooth crown to hold them in the critical moment and that's their three lord choices, relatively straightforward. Uh, Throg's going to be kind of your world beater, uh, your general monster killer. He does have some weaknesses, but overall is a very strong character. Wolfric's going to be your all-arounder. I think he'll be the go-to in most matchups. The Sea Fang and the Hunter of Champions make him a very strong character, good at dealing both with uh, large groups of infantry and with characters. And uh, you can also take the Chariot, which is super fun, and a Mammoth, of course. So, in terms of heroes, you have selections of several lore of magic. You actually have two types of casters, and we'll look at each of them in turn. You have the Shaman Sorcerer and the Famir Bale Fiend. So, there is a little bit of overlap. Both uh, casters have access to lore of fire. However, the Shaman Sorcerer has lore of death and lore of metal as well, whereas the Famir Bale Fiend also has lore of shadows. Now, obviously, the lores speak for themselves. Death is very strong in a multitude of matchups. The ability to cast uh, Soul Blight to help synergize with Wolfric's Armor Sundering and the Armor Sundering of the Famir, which we'll get to in just a moment, synergizes very well. Death, of course, also has plenty of other strong spells. Metal also synergizes well because, of course, you have Plague of Rust. You can really go heavy on a single target here, and if you're hitting him with a Famir, overcast Plague of Rust and cast Wolfric's ability, you can get minus 120 armor on a character, which uh, basically pretty much any character in the game, just about, unless it's like Mazda Mundi riding Slock or something, is going to be at zero armor. So, <laughs> again, uh, <clears throat> uh, Wolfric's lack of AP doesn't really matter too much in that situation. Obviously, Lore of Metal has some other good spells. Uh, Lore of Fire, pretty self-explanatory, going to be good in matchups where fire is good, like the Vampires. Uh, Skaven, also, uh, Lore of Fire can be pretty decent. And, uh, yeah, Famir, uh, let's go ahead and go back to the Sorcerer for just a minute. The Mounts, actually, he gets a, a Warhorse and a Chariot, so the Chariot, you know, can give him some good anti-infantry. The Norskin Chariots actually do armor piercing, so that is one thing to note. Obviously, his combat stats go down. But uh, the Norskin Chariots do Armor Piercing, and I believe that is true of even Wolfric. Uh, yep, so something to note. Can give a good, a nice anti-infantry version against someone like the Skaven or the Dwarves. Really nice to have a Shaman Sorcerer on a Chariot. The Famir can't take a mount. However, he's a large entity, as you can see here. Um, he's a big old monstrous dude. He's got magic and armor sundering, as all Famir do. You'll see more of that in just a moment. He also does armor piercing and melee. Doesn't have the best combat stats, but reasonable armor. Also has some missile resistance, 15% base, plus 22% if his leadership is above 50%, with that from the mist ability that the Famir have. You can even cut it on the Famir Bale Fiend, although, unless you're playing the vampires, I don't know why you would. Um... Lore of Fire, obviously, and Lore of Shadows, both very strong. Lore of Shadows is probably going to be the best pick in most matchups, unless you need Fire specifically to counter regenerating units. I think that Lore of Shadows is probably going to be your go-to. Uh, Milkos, Enfeebling Foe, uh, and Penumbral Pendulum in particular, when you couple that with Wolfric, you can get that double wind ability. It's a very, very strong. Withering, again, another armor debuff, so if you really want to go heavy with the armor sundering, you can. And uh, Occam's Mind Razor and Pit of Shades speak for themselves. So that's it uh, for the casters. Now, the Norskins do also have access to a melee hero. Uh, the Skin Wolf Werekin, very strong in game one, not as strong in game two. And let's talk a little bit about why. So, <clears throat> in general, there's a lot more things in game two that are focused around killing single target large entities. And Skin Wolf Werekin is a single target large entity, does have 70 armor. 20% missile uh, physical resistance rather and has regeneration that does make him weak to fire though so be careful of that fire is a common pick against Norska because skin wolves and throg are all weak to fire uh, and a lot of the the ice units I believe as well we'll take a look at that in just a moment but uh, he does have this Ruinous Flesh buff, which gives 11% Missile Resistance and 18 Armor to all units within the area of effect. Particularly if you're using this to buff up Famir, which already have that base 22% Missile Resistance. Gives them a nice 33% in total, makes them extra resilient against uh, especially Armor Piercing Missile Fire. Um, but in general, the Skin Wolf Werekin is a pretty expensive character. The best analog I can think of is... Uh, Gorbel here. Now, if you cut Foe Seeker and Deadly Onslaught on both, you can see Gorbel is a little bit cheaper. They do have a similar buff ability. 
a slaughter's call, I guess, is a little bit different, more of an offensive focus. And in terms of items, um, you just have the Potion of Speed on the Skin Wolf Werekin, whereas the Gorbel has the Axe of Men, which is a really nice item that makes him unbreakable and causes terror. He also has this uh, Banner of the Fallen Kings, so if his health gets low, he gets an extra damage bonus. No like items on the Werekin, and the Werekin suffers from many of the same issues as the Gorbel, being that he gets knocked around very easily. He doesn't have the best mass, and it makes him tricky. Uh, makes it tricky for him to duel large monsters. You can see Gorbel has more health overall and more armor, uh, slightly worse combat stats, but otherwise very comparable heroes. So you can essentially imagine him like a Gorbel with regeneration. Uh, moving on to the infantry selection, we're going to go ahead and compare these guys to the Chaos Warrior variants in many cases. So you can see the difference. We've got Marauders and Marauders with great weapons, both of which are also on the Chaos roster. They're slightly more expensive for Norska because they come with that Enrage ability. If you compare, they're exactly the same. The only thing they pick up is this uh, Enrage mechanic. So that does add a little bit to their cost, but they are more effective. Now you do have access to Marauder Spearmen, which obviously Chaos do not have. A nice low-ish tier spear. Don't have the best combat stats, especially when you compare them to other lower tier spears. Uh, like, let's say, uh, Empire State Troop Spearmen. Uh, if we actually compare their stats one to one, uh, it looks like Marauders actually, I mean, granted, they're 150 points more expensive. A little less armor, but better stats overall and more health. They also have the Enrage mechanic, so pretty decent low tier spear, but keep in mind they ha do have low armor and there's no shielded variant for these guys, so they are vulnerable to missile fire. And uh, moving on, we've got the Icehorn Marauders. These guys are a regiment of renowned Marauder. They pick up, uh, obviously, better combat stats. They're also immune to Vigor and immune to Psychology, so they won't get terrified, and they also have perfect Vigor, so they won't get tired. Very useful unit in, in some matchups, especially long, grindy ones. Um, moving on, we've got uh, Marauder Berserkers. Now, this is an excellent DPS unit and going to be most likely a backbone of any Norskin build. Um, they're just a really strong DPS unit. We can compare them to a multitude of units. Uh, they do outclass War Dancers based on the testing I've done. I do need to do some more testing. Um, unfortunately, I, those replays did uh, happen before the uh, live update. That was actually in the early access period. But I'm going to try and get some Norskin testing for you guys together just so you can see how the Berserkers stack up to other mid-tier infantry, but they're a very strong mid-tier infantry. If we compare them to War Dancers, War Dancers have better stats, but a lot less health, significantly less health, which makes a big difference. They also have less weapon strength over, excuse me, overall, less charge bonus, and uh, yeah, uh, very similar otherwise though. Uh, Marauder Berserkers don't have any physical resistance, so they have very little mitigation, but again, the big more health makes a big difference. And uh, yeah, they're definitely a very good unit. They do have a small bonus versus infantry of five. Nothing major, but definitely helps. Uh, they're comparable to things like Plague Monks, uh, you know, War Dancers. They're kind of in that tier. Definitely a very nice damage dealer unit. And they synergize very well with the armor sundering that the Femir and other spells can give you. It really makes it so that you really don't need to bring armor piercing infantry. Like, I can't tell you the last time I brought Marauders with great weapons or Marauder Champions. We'll get to those guys in just a minute, but uh, the Regiment of Renown Berserker is the Brutes of the Hound. They're unbreakable. Obviously, they have better stats. They also cause fear, so that's uh, nice to note. They're uh, obviously unbreakable Regiments of Renown are going to be an auto-pick in almost any matchup just because of the fact that they're unbreakable, but uh, yeah, very strong unit overall. Let's go to uh, Marauder Champions now. Um, <clears throat> Marauder Champions... Uh, they're in a bit of an odd place. Let's go ahead and compare and contrast. I'm not a big fan of Marauder Champions. I don't think they're very cost-effective. Chosen, obviously a bit more expensive and a bit more elite. But you can see they just outclass the Marauder Champions in every way. They're not that much more expensive, and they're just completely better. More health, more armor, more leadership, less speed, obviously, but better combat stats, more weapon strength, and more charge bonus. And, uh, yeah, let's also compare Marauder Champions. Uh, let's see. What would be another good comparison unit? Maybe Storm Vermin uh, with Swords and Shields. They're around the same price. Uh, let's see. Now, Storm Vermin do have 120 unit models. Keep that in mind. Whereas Marauder Champions only have 75. You can see uh, the Marauder Champions actually have less armor and less health. They have better leadership, but they're a little slower. 
and they do have a significantly better melee defense and weapon strength and charge bonus so the Marauder Champion shielded variant might be pretty decent that 53 melee defense is okay but generally I haven't found found them to be wildly cost-effective um, you know they're just uh, just not really worth the price I often find um, I'm not really sure what other units to compare them to kind of a more elite tier sword and board I guess we could compare them to uh, Sisters of Slaughter briefly not exactly the same unit, but a similar-ish similar, uh, similar -ish unit. Let's see here. So if we take a look at Sisters of Slaughter. Now these guys are 1100. They uh, So they're 100 points more expensive. Again, more health. And I think that's one of the biggest issues on the Marauder Champions. Um, or actually, no. The Marauder Champions have more health. Sorry, misread that. And more armor. But obviously they just have worse combat stats overall. And no poison. No murderous mastery and uh, all that jazz. So, yeah, the Marauder Champions with shields might be a decent defensive option. Um, I haven't used them too off too much. I'll have to admit, but um, maybe I'll play around with these guys a little bit. The Marauder Champions with ray weapons in particular, though, are pretty underwhelming. Let's compare them. Obviously, Harganeth Executioners are uh, <clears throat> 100 points more expensive, but they. Uh, they have less health, but more armor. They have better leadership and better combat stats. Harganeth Executioners also have better total weapon strength, plus a bonus versus infantry. Uh, now let's compare to another similarly costed unit. Um, Black Orcs. So if we compare Black Orcs to the uh, Marauder Champions, only 50 cost difference, but the Black Orcs have 10 more weapon strength. They are immune to psychology, have significantly more armor, uh, less unit models, but still. Uh, they have better leadership, and their combat stats are relatively comparable. Uh, now, keep in mind the champions do have the benefit of Enrage, whereas the Greenskins have the WA mechanic, and a number of other melee attack buffs. So, yeah, uh, just a little bit underwhelmed by Marauder champions with great weapons. Uh, they seem to not be super cost effective. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure what else. I guess we can compare them to some uh, Chaos Infantry here. Uh, Chaos Warriors with great weapons. Cheaper. And uh, you can see not that much worse. They do have uh, actually slightly less health. Uh, more armor, obviously, though. And uh, interesting, the Chaos Warriors actually have better leadership. The combat stats are almost the same. And the weapon strength is barely different. So you see how inefficient these Marauder Champions are. This is a pretty good comparison. Uh, the Chaos Warriors with Great Weapons just so much more cost effective, and I even feel that Chaos Warriors with Great Weapons aren't that cost effective. So uh, that's you can see on paper why Marauder Champions aren't going to be super effective. And in my anecdotal experience, they aren't. I've used them in a couple matchups, and I've talked to people who've been using them. And uh, you know, sometimes they can surprise your opponent, but overall, I think you're better to go with non-armor piercing infantry and to synergize with some Famir. But let's move on. You've got two ranged infantry, Marauder Hunters and Marauder Hunters with Javelins. Javelins obviously anti-large, not as much AP, whereas the Hunters have AP and a Shield Breaker trait, which lowers enemy missile block chance. So uh, yeah, I've actually found Marauder Hunters to be really good against Shielded Cavalry. Uh, Marauder Hunters with Javelins, though, will just destroy any large unit. So uh, definitely a good pick against anyone except the Dwarves. Uh, moving on, you've got two options for chariots. Regular Marauder Chariots, which are the same as Chaos Chariots, I believe, just with the Enrage mechanic added in. Uh, let's take a look here. 750 for the Chaos Chariot. And, uh, yep, interesting. Slight health difference there. I wonder why that is. But, uh, anyway, then you've also got access to the Ice Wolf Chariot. So the Ice Wolf Chariot is uh, more expensive. It does pick up a missile attack and has more health. Slightly less armor, but it has better stats, better speed. Interesting, 95 speed, which is very fast. And it also has the frostbite mechanic. So any unit that it comes into contact to will get that minus 36% 36, 36 speed debuff from frostbite. They also cause fear, and again, armor piercing missile attack. Just a better chariot overall. A bit more expensive, but uh, can be very well worth it in certain matchups. Moving on, Missile Cavalry, you've got the same selection as Chaos, Rotter Horsemen, Rotter Horsemen Throwing Axes, and Rotter Horse Masters. Uh, horsemen and horm Horse Masters are essentially the same unit. Horse Masters just have more health, armor, combat stats, and uh, everything, pretty much. <laughs> They're a little bit slower. Uh, no, actually the same speed. Wow, interesting. 
And uh, yeah, obviously the Horseman Throwing Axe is the only one with a Missile Block chance, and they also have uh, Armor Piercing Missiles, obviously, but slightly lower range. So uh, yeah, same as what you get on the Chaos roster, just with the Rage mechanic. Moving on to the Monsters and Beasts, kind of the, one of the big meaty parts of the Norskin roster. You've got Norskin Warhounds, again, same thing as Chaos Warhounds, just with the Enrage, I believe, or maybe even not that difference. Uh, yeah, no, these are exactly the same unit, just a different name. <laughs> you also get access to Ice Wolves, though, which are a higher tier unit, definitely. You can see they count as large instead of infantry size, which normal Warhounds count as. They cause fear, frostbite, they also have pretty good weapon strength. 42 total weapon strength with a 13 armor piercing and a 38 charge bonus. These guys are actually a really nice fast attack choice, can put out a surprising amount of damage. You've also got the Beasts of Tashnar, which are a Regiment of Renown Norskin Wolf for the same price. Obviously these guys have better stats and pick up an anti-large bonus. They also have Vanguard and Frenzy, so a very nice Regiment of Renown Beast of Tashnar. Uh, I really like running the Beast of Tashnar with Unit of Ice Wolves, because then if, as your opponent tries to pull away, the Ice Wolves will slow, got, slow them down, so then the Beast of Tashnar can get the hits, and between the two of them they can get a lot of work done. So uh, very fun stuff. You've got Norskin Ice Trolls, typical uh, trolls. I believe these guys are actually the same as the Chaos Trolls, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, more or less no difference there. You do have access to an upgraded variant, though, the Norskin Ice Trolls. So these guys obviously pick up Frostbite, a bit more weapon strength, less melee defense, but they also have an additional weakness, <coughs> excuse me, additional weakness to fire. So these guys have a total of 45% weakness to fire. So if you're uh, facing a faction that has fire damage, you'll want to leave these Norskin Ice Trolls at home. Otherwise, they can be a very good option and a nice little upgrade for not that much extra. Uh, the extra weapon strength, charge bonus, and even some extra armor as well, which is always nice. And of course, the frostbite mechanic is very strong. Moving on, we've got the Skin Wolves, a staple of game one, now substantially less effective. And the reason being is that their melee defense really isn't that good at the end of the day. Uh, we'll get to why I prefer Famir in just a minute, but Skin Wolves generally are a non-armor piercing anti-large unit. So they're going to be good against non-armored large targets. They do have 21 AP with a plus 30 bonus versus large. Obviously the only difference between the two variants is that uh, regular Skin Wolves have only 15 armor, whereas the armored Skin Wolves has 70 armor at the cost of 10 speed. So they're down to 65 um, there is the Regiment of Renown, Maws of Savagery as well. These guys are substantially more expensive. If you look here, we'll actually chevron this guy up for comparison. They're uh, slightly less than the uh, than a full rank Armored Skin Wolf, but uh, they do pick up Armor Piercing, so uh, more of their weapon strength is Armor Piercing. Let's go ahead and have a look. It's uh, 39 Armor Piercing in total. So obviously that makes them significantly more effective. They also have Vanguard Deployment, so they can get some sneaky ambushes going. But uh, yeah, overall, because Skin Wolves have substantially lower melee defense, I think that they're a lot squishier. And just in general, I haven't found them to be as effective. They are good in certain matchups. Skaven, for example, and Beastmen are pretty good matchups. Any matchup where you're going to be facing large, unarmored targets, they can be pretty decent. But in general, I haven't found to be found them to be wildly effective, especially because people tend to take a lot more fire damage against you now. So uh, if someone does take fire damage, obviously these guys have the standard regeneration trait, and especially the unarmored version will just get melted by any kind of fire damage, so something to keep in mind. Famir, on the other hand, uh, better combat stats, they actually have armor piercing, less total weapon strength, but they have uh, 110 armor, which is massive, they have more health, less unit models overall, and obviously they're much slower. But uh, the better combat stats, and they have magic attacks and armor sundering. So these guys just, they synergize well with your berserkers. They have better stats. 110 armor and this good of stats makes them a very powerful monstrous infantry. You can even take a great weapon variant that uh, loses out on a little bit of um, combat stats. A little bit less melee attack and defense for greater weapon strength and charge bonus. And they also pick up an anti-large bonus of 30. So these guys are true world beaters. Uh, Famir, I can't stress enough, guys, are the way forward for Norska. At least in the current patch, obviously, all this is subject to change 
later on down in successive patches. If you are watching this after the fact, um, be sure to check the stats of your units and obviously compare and contrast and try and figure it out for yourself. But at least at the time of recording this, Famir are the way. You can see especially the Mist Stalkers here, the Regiment of Renown Famir, 56 melee defense, 45 melee attack, 110 armor, they cause fear and terror, they have missile resistance as all Famir do, uh, the Regiment of Renown have uh, Vanguard deployment, obviously the regular Famir don't cause terror, but this Regiment of Renown does. Uh, they're not a great weapon variant, unfortunately, but uh, just that the raw combat steer stats here make these guys super powerful. I'm a huge, huge fan of Famir. Like I said, the armor sundering synergizes well with the... Uh, you know, the Berserkers in the front line and even the regular Marauders. And uh, I guess you could synergize well with Marauder Champions as well, although I haven't tried that. Um, but you have other armor sundering effects you can stack on. You can stack on Wolfric the Wanderer's effect. You can use some magic. Um, really tear away your opponent's armor and just let these uh, non-armor piercing infantry do a lot of work. The Femir are a key part of that. So I definitely think that they're the way forward. In terms of monsters, Feral Manticore... You, in plenty of rosters kind of a subpar monster at the end of the day uh, but relatively cheap unfortunately they are feral so they do uh, rampage same thing with the feral mammoth here now mammoths are anti-infantry armor piercing with a large charge bonus has pretty good combat stats overall but obviously being feral only has 30 armor and will rampage uh, mammoths in general are pretty strong monsters we'll get to some of the other variants in just a minute but uh, norskin giant same as all other giants, I would assume. Let's go ahead and just compare briefly to the uh, Warriors of Chaos version. Uh, I believe it is exactly the same in every respect, um, just except uh, the Norskin giant looks different. Yep, exactly the same. So uh, moving on from there, we've got the Frostworm, which is a kind of dragon-like unit. It's not really a dragon. Let's compare to the High Elves just briefly here. So we can compare it to an actual dragon. Sun Dragon's the same price, so that seems like an, a logical choice. Uh, the Sun Dragon has better stats all around, but less armor. Does fire damage, obviously, instead of applying Frostbite. Uh, the Frostworm also does magic damage. Just uh, lesser stats overall, but it does come with some additional effects. So let's look at that. It's weak to fire damage, 25%. So again, fire damage, very good against Norska. Good against a lot of these different units. And it has a frost breath, obviously, instead of a fire breath. It also has this chilling aura, 36% speed, which is a massive debuff. So uh, you can apply this chilling aura to slow something down and then hit it with the frostbite. And you're going to be slowing most units in the game down by 75% or so speed. So that is absolutely massive. And it makes the Frostworm a very uh, interesting pick in certain matchups, especially when you need to catch something. Uh, can actually be pretty decent. Uh, obviously, the magic attacks are going to be good against physical resistance units as well. So I'll have to play around with the Frostworm and see a little bit kind of where its niche uh, falls. But definitely an interesting unit. And in terms of the Mammoth, we've got the regular Mammoth and the Mammoth with the War Shrine. So the regular Mammoth... Uh, versus the War Shrine, regular Mammoth is a bit faster. It has missiles on the back, so there's a little howda on the back that these guys throw javelins out of, which are indeed anti-large. Something to note, it doesn't do that much damage, but uh, hey, it's a little something extra. And then the Chaos War Shrine Mammoth just instead uh, trades the missile attack for some abilities. So it has this uh, Favor of the Ruinous Powers, just gives a plus 10 leadership buff to all units in an area of effect. And then it also has this Giver of Glory, which makes it a unit unbreakable and gives it fire damage for 16 seconds. Again, more fire damage going to be good against things like Vampires, uh, Skaven, and so on. And uh, yeah, finally, you've got the Soul Crusher, the Regiment of Renown Mammoth. It's a regular War Mammoth, not a War Shrine. Um, but it does pick up a few abilities, obviously better stats all around, and it has Strider. So it doesn't uh, <clears throat> suffer terrain penalties and it also has enrage so this is basically just a single uh, self-targeting 44% damage resistance makes it extra extra tanky just <laughs> because you know 11,000 HP isn't enough on the mammoths I suppose but uh, yeah that's pretty much the entire Norskin roster as it stands right now let me know your guys thoughts in the comments down below I hope you found this in informative enjoyed it um, yeah, definitely Norska is a lot of fun. Good matchups, I would say. Uh, they're good against any of the big monster factions. So, like Tomb Kings, Lizardmen, 
Um, they're decent against Chaos, although that one is pretty even. Uh, they're okay against most of the Elf factions, although the Wood Elves can give them fits. Um, found them to be pretty good against both the Human factions. The Empire can be a bit tricky because they have a lot of fire damage, but uh, you can definitely overwhelm them. Um, what else? Vampires. It seems tough on paper for the vampires, but I've actually found to be surprisingly even. Uh, Norse guy does definitely have some good tools in that matchup, but Dwarves is an interesting one as well. I haven't played that one too much, but from what I remember, Norska was pretty good in that, and I'm assuming that's still the same. But uh, that that is one matchup I haven't got the chance to play too much. But uh, let me know your guys' thoughts and experiences down in the comments below. How have you enjoyed playing Norska? Do, does my highlighting of different units and abilities here maybe change the way you're going to play Norska? Um, like I said, I really tried to highlight the Famir and the Berserkers. I really think that's going to be your core of most armies, but obviously you want supporting elements and most good armies are relatively well balanced so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below hope you guys enjoyed watching if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification thank you once again and we'll see you next time